2023 may not be the year of the Linux desktop. It may not be the year of the Wayland desktop. But do you know what year it is going to be? The year of GIMP 3.0. And I know you've probably heard this a bunch. I said it a bunch here as well. But every single day, we get closer and closer to that release candidate coming out. And we are so close, so very, very close, there's only a couple of things that need to be done. So recently, 2.99.16 released, and it's available in the Flatpak beta repo. If you've not messed around with it for a while, I highly recommend you do. Because it is a lot more polished than it was a couple of months back. The last time I used it, it was an absolute mess. It would crash for basically no reason. I would open a certain window, it would crash. I would use a certain tool, it would crash. And there's a reason why that isn't the case anymore. So along with the release, they released some release notes. The GTK3 port, one of the biggest reasons for GIMP3 existing in the first place, is finally done. With the exception of a couple of minor deprecation warnings here and there, but nothing like the hundreds they used to have. But the actual functionality in the UI is done. The last big thing they had to do to make this happen was fully porting over the actions. This is GTK terminology for shortcuts, their mechanism, and also how menus are handled and how generic widgets can quickly be assigned shared action code. So back on GTK2, a system called GTK Action would be used, but this version in 3.10 has been deprecated in favor of G Action. Now G Action doesn't work the exact same way. They say it loses a lot of the features they use. Everything user facing basically, labels, descriptions, icon, and so on, or it is broken apart into further elements. So whilst they certainly could have redesigned the architecture to fit with this new programming style, instead what they did is what every single programmer who doesn't want to change the architecture does. They build a wrapper. That wrapper is called GIMP Action. And this includes all of those user-facing features that were previously inside of GTK Action. But that's not the only wrappers they built. We also had to wrap a bunch of other widgets, such as our menus, mostly because menus generated from menu models don't have tooltips anymore in GTK3. Yet, we make extensive use of tooltips, and menu models, GIMP menu, and GIMP menu model, our own toolbar, and menu bar, GIMP toolbar, and GIMP menu bar, and many, many more. Alongside doing other things in the project, this took two months of boring and exhausting work. But in the long term, this makes things a lot easier. It also gives us a new world of possibilities as we added new concepts which we've wanted for a long time, such as the ability to associate a short and long label to an action, e.g. when it's used in a contextual interface such as a menu versus when it's used without context, such as an action search. It is also the path for the planned future improvements, e.g. for a future customizable toolbar. This is not set to happen with 3.0, this is for a further update. But with this, you better set customizable quick buttons for any action possible. This would be super useful if you start, you know, running out of hotkeys, or maybe you're not a big hotkey user, you just want to have buttons for everything you want to use. But whilst the porting is done, there is still some backend improvements they want to make to make things just work nicer than before. Most of these, though, are not going to be very user-facing changes. Whilst GTK3 is one of the biggest changes for GIMP3, that's not the only thing that changed in this update. Whilst there is currently not an interface to do this, and it probably won't be there for GIMP3's release, due to the new way the actions work, you can set multiple hotkeys to the exact same action. So if you want to have something like make a new layer on Control N and then, I don't know, F12 for example, random combination. But internally, you can go and do that now. And some of the default hotkeys they have are now making use of this system. But what I think is much cooler is the action search improvements. So you may or may not know this, but in GIMP, if you press the slash key, it brings up this little window. In here, we can search for any action available in GIMP, like say, brightness, or new layer, or color, or anything else you wanna do. Now the improvement here is this thing on the right hand side. It now shows the menu path to get to an action. So if we go to say, uh, brightness, this is going to be under the menu, colors. If we go to colors, right here, brightness and contrast. 
Also, it is going to show you the hotkey as well. But for those of you out there that don't really like using this menu system as a direct way to access things, this can be used as sort of a reference on where things are located. So you can search for something in here and then go through the actual menu system you like. Also, there's this little book icon here. If we hover over brightness and contrast, hit the button, this is going to open up the manual. Now, I don't actually have the manual installed, but if you don't have it installed, you can go and read it online. If we go over here, that didn't link me. That's a problem with the flat pack. Okay. That, wait, no, it did. There it is. Just took a moment. Flat packs are weird sometimes. There we go, right? There's a contrast. But your other option, if you're not using a system like me where your F keys are being eaten, pressing F1 will open the docs. Until I saw the search feature in this update, I was unaware that it even existed. But now that I've been using it, this is incredibly useful. It did exist in the older versions as well, it just didn't have these extra additions. Another massive improvement is the improved Gaggle Operation GUI integration. So Gaggle is their image processing engine, and you can use this to make custom effects like a box blur, mosaic, uh, borders around a text, drop shadows, things like that. Whatever you want to do. And previously, this is how it would work. So this is GIMP 2.10. On the Geggle tool, we click here, we go to Geggle Operation, and I've got a bunch installed. There is basically no sorting besides alphabetical order. They're not broken down like the filters are, where we have these different sections. Here's one on blur, here's one on enhance, and all of these different things. It's just, hey, work it out. Also, there's no searching. You can't search here. So, have fun. But as you may notice from the icons here, a lot of these built-in filters are using Geggle. It's just because they're built in, they are already in the menu. So the change is now Geggle Operation developers can define which menu an operation should exist in. And when they do so, it is then going to be in that menu. But with that, by being in a menu, it also means it integrates with the action search. So now, you actually have a way to search for them. This is such a massive usability improvement that makes Geggle Operations actually useful. I think they are super cool and they do a lot of really cool effects, but they are so inconvenient to work with and this finally deals with that. And also by being in the menus, you can assign hotkeys to them. Now there was a way that developers previously worked around this. While Geggle Operations wouldn't appear in the menu, plugins would. So people would make these fake plugins that basically just existed as a way to list out the Geggle operations. It was a dumb workaround and didn't need to happen, and now it no longer needs to exist. And a bunch of other random tiny things have been changed. Like with the text tool, now you can actually go and hide this window. Click show on canvas, and it's no longer there. Now, the default theming has also been changed as well. So if you set use dark theme variant if available and you were set to default, what it would have been using was this theme. This theme still exists, but it is now the darker theme. On the default dark theme, it's a little bit lighter. Personally, I don't really care. The devs felt that the now darker was a little bit too dark and didn't really make any sense as an alternative to the dark version of this theme but they also said they might remove it in the future. If they do remove it, you can always just go and re-add it. Also, JPEG Excel now has support for CMYKA. This is colors plus alpha. This should be treated as initial support, not production ready. If you need it to be production ready, go use another application. Also, something I personally don't care about because I don't use them, but you can now merge your title bar and your menu bar together. So if you're a GNOME user that has these really annoying bars along the top that serve no purpose whatsoever, except as a thing to grab on, you can now put your menu bar into that space. At this point, there are only two major features left. The first being the new plugin system. So previously, plugins were kind of just haphazard. You had themings doing one thing, you had giggle operations doing another thing, you had plugins, in a sense, doing a whole nother thing. All of these are completely separate formats. The new system is going to be one consistent format that everything uses, and this is going to make it much easier to build a plugin manager. 
This system is well on its way, but it's important enough that we'll really need to look into the details. The second thing is the Space Invasion Project, which probably doesn't make any sense as a name, but that is the name for their new color system. Improving GIMP color support and making it so you can actually do production work with it. And as we are really reaching the stabilization stage in our development, while our requirement rule was based on Debian testing, whatever it was, we recently froze our dependency bumps on the just released Debian 12. It means that we won't bump any minimum requirement over what is in Debian 12 except for optional dependencies and even so as exceptional cases and with very good reasons. This is because we plan to release soon enough that we need to make sure GIMP can be packaged on all reasonably recent distributions. It is so close to being here. So, so very close. Hopefully by the end of this year, actually see at least a release candidate, if not a full release. I want to be hopeful and I want to believe. This project has been a really, really long time in the making. So long, in fact, that GTK went from being the GIMP toolkit over to being the GNOME toolkit. Features are being added and removed from GTK. The GIMP actually needs to make it work. And we've talked about it before, but I really hope they drop this idea of we need to have these giant updates. Do things in a more incremental way, add these features as they're done. Some of these things could have been released years ago. There has been no reason to wait so long besides the traditional release model. So with that, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you excited for GIMP 3? Have you been messing around with 2.99? Or are you even a GIMP user in the first place? Maybe you use, I don't know, Photopea. I would love to know. Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scribe, Silly Barrow Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And maybe it's copium, but I want it to be hopium. Daytime,